Hi, good morning everyone and thanks for joining me on uh, the webinar this morning. So my name is Neil and I'm a technical solutions consultant here at AMS and today I'm going to talk about some of the challenges we all come across with existing and traditional transfer processes and, and really how we can look to address these with AMS file transfer. I'll try and keep these slides down to a minimum and get to the demo as quickly as possible and I'll be offering the presentation document as a handout PDF uh, so you can refer back to it. Uh, I believe you can actually download that already on the panel uh, to your right. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat window and I'll, I'll cover them at the end of, of the session. So AMS was formed in 92 and much of our experience is around the security of data and finding ways to manage this more efficiently within a business. So as technology has changed and evolved, uh, we focused more on, on document management and secure file transfer, which we're looking at today. And file transfer isn't really specific to a certain sector. Uh, however, the solution is widely used in sectors like healthcare in the NHS, uh, in the print industry, uh, legal, manufacturing, engineering, uh, just to name a few. So AMS does have a dedicated in-house uh, team for both pre- and post-sales support and we really do pride ourselves on our, on our reputation and for the support that we offer and many of our customers would endorse us for the support that they receive from us. We also have our own in-house development team and this really enables us to be flexible with our solutions and, and to meet the exact requirements of our customers, which I feel is a real benefit. So I've come up with a list here of the most common methods of transferring documents and data and the challenges faced by businesses using these. So a lot of my projects at the moment are in healthcare, uh, more specifically in the NHS. And they still use, uh, as an example, removable media and use postal services to send out patient records. Uh, the obvious drawbacks of this is loss of data, uh, the lack of control with no central audit of who's received the data, when they accessed it, and the biggest one as well is the cost involved, so the cost of printing, postage, and the actual um, memory sticks as well that they're posting out. In some cases, uh, records are being put in taxis due to time constraints and the pressure of having to respond to these requests within 30 days. So we like to think of ourselves as being unique. Uh, we do have two solutions in a single platform. So the file transfer element is more of a peer-to-peer -peer transfer with expiry. And file shares, if you think of it as a container-based service, so a folder in the cloud, and this provides you with a longer-term storage and collaboration on documents. Uh, this also does have retention built in and also a workflow if you wanted it, which would allow you to delete a file on download. And one of the key elements of the solution is the central control and management of the service and being able to see what's happened to the information, who's accessed it, and at what time. And also tools which enable you as the sender to revoke the access or um, to the recipients that you sent it to, or recall files either sent in error or that you no longer wish to be published. There are uh, com compliance reports and audits that can be run uh, these can be exported in CSV file format for further analysis outside of the solution. And these are very comprehensive, both from the sender's side and the central administration. And due to its interface, uh, we feel it's very intuitive. And this breeds sort of a, a higher user adoption. And the feedback that we receive, uh, both from internal staff and external users, is always very positive. And it really does help with the transition when moving away from these more traditional ways 
of, of sending data as mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, in terms of desktop tools, we have an Outlook plugin and we also have a dedicated desktop tool for the file transfer and new, a new desktop tool as well now for our file shares element of the platform. So for the branding, here's a really good example of a branded site for one of our customers. Um, I'm sure you'd agree, but not only does it look good, um, but it does provide great brand recognition. Uh, there's also benefits around security and reassurance that this provides to your users that they're on the correct site. Uh, the branding service does cover the main website, uh, the logo, a background image, and the color theme throughout. Um, we even brand the email templates. You could add logos and disclaimers to those as well. Uh, and if IT are asking, uh, we can provide you with your own web address and also change the emails that are sent from the notification emails. Great, so I'm at the stage now where I'm just going to demo uh, the platform to you, show you how the solution works and just cover off some of the tools available. So if I just minimize this. So this is the <clears throat> on our demo platform at least, this is our demo uh, site. You'll see we've got a, a branded version of that as well. Um, and if you've got a, a login, you'll be able to log in using your uh, username and password as you would with any, any sort of system. And if I just minimize the left panel, just to show you the two solutions that we have in one. And as the, as the user, which I'm logged in as now, um, you would only see whichever one you're licensed for. So it's not going to be confusing for anyone. Um, so essentially, we've got the My Transfers. This is the peer-to-peer -peer with, with expiring the shares, which is the container-based solution. Um, but for now, if I just go ahead and create a new transfer and just show you what it's like from both the sender's perspective and the user's perspective when they actually receive the email and they're able to then download uh, the data that's been attached. Um, so in here in the two field box, this list actually uh, is made up in my case of um, an address book that I've been given access to, um, but also the list builds as you start sending to more and more contacts. Um, you can manage that as well um, through your profile. So if I just add a new contact in here to send information to, if I personally haven't sent to them before, it does tag it with an invite tag. Um, and also I'll just select a, a current contact from the list here as well. And the key point here with the subject and notes is that this information, although we are in an encrypted session, is classified as insecure data. And the reason being is that the subject and notes form part of the email notification that's sent out to the users. Um, so this will display as the, the email subject. So in here, we say be descriptive, but don't necessarily include any sensitive information. So we can add a reference or any of the subjects in there and just address it to the right person. And for any sensitive information that you wish to attach or send, maybe personal identifiable information outside of the attachment, this is what the secure notes option is for. It's fully encrypted and it allows you to type this information in and it's only accessible once the recipients have authenticated to the system. So for argument's sake, if you're still insistent on password protecting files, you don't need to, but a good process would be you'd pop your password in here and it saves you having to send maybe an additional email with that password, which as you know is, is insecure, but also maybe putting a phone call in to those recipients uh, and, and telling them the password over the phone. So it just skips out that extra step. So step two is around uploading the files. Um, the solution itself, unless you impose them, doesn't have any file type or file size restrictions. Um, we have a unique upload engine in the browser uh, without being too technical, but it, it gets around having to install any 
uh, plugins, both on the user side and recipient side, and we see this as being a massive benefit, especially with um, the control from a central IT point of view. Obviously, you don't want to be receiving calls all the time um, when, when someone's not able really to install a plugin properly. Um, so yeah, it's very simple to manage, very intuitive. Uh, and on the left side, you see some options around um, around being able to restrict how many files could be uploaded to a single transfer, uh, the maximum transfer size and file size as well. Again, these are imposed by your administrator through what we call the file transfer policies. But for now, if I just go ahead and upload, upload some files, just grab a couple of files here. And what we're doing here is chunking the data uh, into configurable pieces, and it gets around any browser limitations. Um, and this is all caught in the audit along the process as well. So if I deleted a file uh, or uploaded new files, they'll all be in the not only this, the, the sender's audit, but also the central audit of the solution. So next, or step three, um, so we've got some further options around managing the transfer. So the expiry date, by default, will be set to, again, whatever set at the policy level. In my case, it's set to 14 days from now. And there's also something called a maximum expiry, which again prevents the users from being able to set this any longer than, than obviously the, the uh, 30 days that's, that's set here. And the, what the expiry does is just um, control the retention of the data and the transfer. So once it hits that expiry, all of the users, recipients, all of the files are, are securely um, revoked access, but also deleted um, from, from the platform. So access options, we have three. Again, these can be filtered out to make it simple. Um, but login um, essentially will, in all cases, sorry, you'll, you'll receive an email with a download button. But once the recipient clicks on that download button, it would then depend on which um, access option has been uh, selected by the, uh, the sender. Um, so it depends on which one is, which is available, basically. So login would uh, essentially um, force them to create an account if they don't already have one. Um, if they do have one, it would just prompt them to log into the system. Uh, open link is really more for brochures, um, less sensitive information. Once you click that download button, you're taken straight into the platform without any um, sort of typed authentication like the login or token. And token is a bit of a mixture between the two. So um, you're taken to a secure web page, you're requesting a, a token, which is then additionally emailed through to you um, as a second, second layer of security, and then you're able to copy and paste that into the secure token window. Um, for the purpose of this, I'll just show you login. Um, we do have another module called File Access Restrictions. This is our DRM module, which is Digital Rights Management. And all it is is a way of restricting how users can interact with the files that you've attached. So for supported file types, uh, in any case, they can be viewed or download, downloaded from the system, uh, viewed in line uh, with the inline browser um, and viewer. And some of the options available allow you to restrict whether they can or can't download those files and forcibly view them within uh, the, the viewer that we've made available. Um, and also re removing some of the options in the viewer around being able to print and download files is key as well with DRM. Finally, some of the options here are referring to um, the email notification. So whether you're notified when a transfer is read, um, when someone's downloaded a file for the first time, or when the transfer has expired. Um, these can be set either by your administrator um, or by, by yourself in your own profile, um, but you can also toggle them on and off as well as necessary. And um, so just go ahead and hit send. Immediately I'm taken to my sent items where I can manage um, anything else that I have sent during um, the, the, the sort of expiry period. Anything that does expire is then removed from my sent items, um, although it is still um, auditable from a central management point of view for a configurable amount of time. Um, so don't worry, once it has been removed from the sender side, you can then report on it as an administrator later on. Uh, we do also have an archive option, um, which you can enable on an individual level. 
So once something is removed or deleted automatically from the sent items, it does go into the archive, again, for a configurable period um, on the user's side as well. Um, so that's kind of sending. What I'll do is if I, if I just sign out, I'll show you then the recipient side. So what they see and now how they interact with the file transfer. So now I'm the recipient. I've received the email. You notice it's branded. Um, and I can just hit the download files button. This recognizes that um, login has been used as the authentication option and that I'm a new user to the system. So now it's telling me that it's going to send me an additional email um, just to verify uh, who I am. And what that does, it just prevents someone from being able to forward on um, that email um, and uh, yeah, essentially try and access the, the file transfer without being the original recipient. So I've received the additional email to register. And this is a one-time only process. So um, it, it's not, it, you know, it's very intuitive, uh, easy to use. It's not clunky. Um, once they've done this initial registration, they'll just be prompted to log in each and every time you send them a new transfer. So we'll agree to the T's and C's, hit register. And that now allows me to log in with that account that I've just created. And here is my uh, transfer. Um, just to quickly cover the, the user licensing. So there is a pro user account, um, which is the business user. Uh, we also have two types of guest accounts as well. So we've got a guest sender who can receive from pros, but also send back in, which is really good. It makes it a two-way solution. And also the, a single guest account as well, uh, which is more of a read-only account. So they can only actually receive information. Uh, but if I come into here, I've clicked into the message. And uh, more importantly now, we have the not only who it's come from, the original message, but we have access to the secure note, which I've just highlighted on the screen, uh, the files which were originally attached to the, the transfer. We can choose to download them all, which downloads them as a zip file locally to your machine. Um, we could download them individually, which I've just done, or even view them in line as well, um, which loads in the, in the inline viewer. And I didn't use DRM, but um, you can see now that I do um, have the print and download option and just some of the basic tools really for, to enable you to manage that document in, in, the, uh, in the browser window. So if I just then log back in as, um, as the, um, the original sender of the information, and I'll just talk you through some of the options available on the sent item. And this is really where the control comes in. So imagine you've sent this transfer. Um, if, if you send it via email, as an example, you lose all visibility and control over what you've sent, the attachments you've sent. Um, and we're, we're really giving you that functionality in here through the sent item. So we're giving you access to what we call the recipient view, uh, the notes, the secure notes, and the files. Uh, the files that were actually um, attached, you can track each individual download and, and uh, view. Also, you can recall individual files, even if they've already been downloaded, uh, you can recall them so they're no longer available to the users. And under the Shares tab, um, you can see a list of who you've uh, provided access to the transfer, um, more importantly, whether they viewed it, the last time they accessed it. Um, for argument's sake, this, uh, this account at the bottom hasn't yet accessed it, so you can also send them a nudge, which just sends them a little reminder email to access the information. And you can even remove or revoke access as well, again, which, um, which is in real time. Finally, we've got the audit tab. And imagine from a user's perspective, this has given them the control, uh, the visibility of what they've sent, who's interacted with the transfer. But this information is also available from a central point of view as well. And on the right side, just some details around uh, the authentication option used, um, the, the total size of the transfer, and some of the alert options. Uh, you can also delete the entire transfer and also amend the expiry to suit um, your process as well if necessary. Great, so if I just, before I go into the file shares, just show you the Outlook plugin. 
Um, just briefly, just to show you what it looks like and how it works, uh, you could be typing a new email and convert it to uh, an MFT message. Uh, and what, what we're doing here is, is just allowing users to stay within a familiar interface uh, and not really um, have any further training on, on a newer platform, um, which um, sort of breeds the, the, the higher adoption, really, of, of the solution. Um, but for argument's sake, if I just put in um, a new recipient in here and a subject, just like you're typing a normal email. We have options up here um, for large attachment, which bypasses any local settings, preventing you from uploading large files. And what this does to do that is upload little bite-sized files to get around those restrictions. You can attach folders as well, uh, which you can't do in normal email, and that just zips up the contents of an entire folder. And then we're giving you the panel on the right. So you still got control over the authentication options that your profile's been given access to, uh, the expiry date and the secure notes as well. And it's just a case of hitting send. And then if you think about it, the files aren't then uploaded um, via your email, it's, by it's bypassed and uploaded securely to our secure file transfer platform. Okay, so file shares. As I mentioned before, this, these are the secure containers in the cloud, um, more collaborative. But if I just go ahead and create a new one, and we just call it contracts. And what this allows me to do is um, upload uh, new folders or create new folders and upload files. Um, it's worth mentioning that in the desktop app, we do support full um, folder uploads as well. So if you've got a hierarchy of folders, no matter how deep those go within Windows, you can drag and drop those through the desktop app, and that will create that entire folder structure in the cloud for you. Um, it's, it's sort of um, a live view through the desktop app, um, and then you'll be able to access it from either the web interface or, or still continue to use the desktop app to manage that information. Um, so we've got really cool tools around um, in documents being able to, uh, as you'd expect, rename them, view them, download them. Um, you can even make comments in here um, for anyone else that has been given access. And it just comes up with a little message bubble. Um, and also you can check out documents as well. So we've got some basic versioning in here. Um, so once you check out, it gives you the opportunity to either download the file or, or re-upload a file that um, if you've already made those changes. So we'll just quickly show you that. And then if we view that document, not only can you view it in line, but it loads the latest version as the default document as well. And you can even go back and download and view um, the original documents in that sequence. Um, like the file transfer, we're giving you full access to uh, an, an audit, again, which is for the lifetime of the share. Um, and also, you can invite users as well to make this collaborative. So we do have some roles available. But for now, if I just invite um, the same user that I invited through the file transfer before and make them a read-only role, what that means is that um, the Neil Demo account will receive an email and um, it will invite them onto the platform. So if I just quickly do that. So here's my email, just to say that I've been invited. We can open the file share. I've already got the account because I created it during the login process um, when sending a transfer. But you'll see it's taken me straight into the share. I, I don't have any of the admin um, admin functions available that I had before as an owner. Um, I'm a read only, so what I can do by default is view and download and make comments. And also we have notifications that can be enabled as well. So you can set the frequency of these so you're not bombarded all the time with emails. Um, and also set which notifications that you want to be email notified on as and when files are uploaded or, or deleted or comments made.
Great. So I know I've, re I've covered that very quickly. Um, finally, just before I um, complete the presentation, if I just log in and just show you the admin interface and just some of the, um, sorry, just a little bit of trouble here, just some of the uh, reporting options available. So I'm logging in as an administrator. Not only can, as an administrator, can you view um, all of the activity on the system, so all sent or received transfers, um, you can put start and end dates in, filter by sender or recipient, um, and actually delve deeper into those transfers as well and actually see what the senders can see. Um, also, we're giving you um, the ability, just an, as an example, to view an application audit. So likewise, you can do a start and end date filter, but also you can filter on all of these different events. So whether an account's been created, group edited, added, any settings have changed, um, and you know whether whether a transfer policy has been added or edited as well. Great stuff. Um, so one area that I thought might be worth going through in a little bit more detail is the importance of the security and audit capability um, within the file transfer platform. I know I've kind of rushed through a few things, um, but um, yeah, I thought I'd, if, I, if I just cover some of these off. So um, firstly, uh, that all of the transfers are encrypted in transit and at rest using uh, 256-bit AS encryption. Uh, and we also have a variety of different authentication options, as I just showed you there with the login, uh, token, and open link, uh, and also with the viewing options around the digital rights management module. Something I didn't show you was two-factor authentication, which we have in the solution as well. And that can be enabled on a user's profile for both um, or using either SMS or email. Um, we also virus scan up and down of files, uh, which is quite unusual with a cloud-based system, um, but it's just something that we felt was necessary just to put that extra protection in place. So you have a lot of control over the settings which uh, restrict what users can and can't do uh, using the file transfer and file share policies. Uh, settings you can control include the expiry period of the transfers, um, also the, uh, the shares as well. You can set the retention on the container. Um, and also the total size of either a share or, or a transfer and the, the individual file sizes as well can be restricted. Um, with the transfers, you can also publish address books as I covered. Uh, essentially what you are offering is a user-based control but on permissions that you have uh, set from the administration point of view. Uh, we also have all the audit options you'd expect uh, in this type of solution, uh, giving you the audit trail, and evidence if ever a transfer was queried or, or information within the container was queried as well. And these reports, as I mentioned, can be exported in CSV file format uh, and the data can be analyzed further outside of the solution. Okay, so you know we are here to help and work with you on the direction of the project. Uh, and furthermore, we're really happy to organize uh, further conference calls, web demos, uh, even on-site meetings with stakeholders. Um, really, it's just about letting us know how we can help and we'll be there to assist you along the way. Great, so just to say um, thanks again for join us, joining us today. Um, uh, and what I'll do now, if that's okay, I will just go through any questions that have been raised during the webinar. Um, obviously, if, if, you, if you want to add any more questions, please, please feel free to do so. Um, there is a panel on the right where you can type the questions in. Um, so if I just load those up and just see, um, see if we've had any raised at the moment. Great, so first question here is, um, are there any benefits uh, of cloud over on-premise? 
Um, so I kind of briefly touched on the fact that we have both cloud and on-premise um, with the platform. It's completely the same. Obviously, um, one is installed within your own network. One is um, in our um, Microsoft Azure cloud that we manage. Um, I think most people would know the main differences, but the fact that if you use the cloud, there's no need for um, any sort of server technology to be managed, uh, any updates. Uh, there's less resource um, and support um, from, from your perspective. Um, essentially that we're managing the service for you uh, and obviously we have full backups in place and redundancy as well. Uh, we've got a question here about AD integration. Um, at the moment, uh, the on-premise um, does support um, an AD hooking with single sign-on. Um, it is something we are investigating um, with the cloud on being able to have some sort of single sign-on um, service. At the moment, it isn't in the solution, um, but we'd be more than happy to talk it through with you um, just to see how you'd see this working um, and with a view of obviously uh, investigating that further internally. Um, cost difference between cloud and on-premise. Good question again. So. Um, the on-premise is licensed by a server, so that's kind of the software to install the server. Um, and it's also centered around um, the users, not the guest users. The guest accounts, whether it's a guest sender or a guest itself, are free and unlimited, both the cloud and on-premise. Um, but with the on-premise, we kind of license it by the server module and the professional users, as we call them. And there are bands as well. Um, so obviously, the more that you um, that you need, uh, the cheaper cost per user uh, it becomes as well. And then there's uh, there, there are sort of costs around installation and an annual support fee for the on-premise. Cloud slightly different. We do have plans available, um, which again is based on how many users that that you have on the platform, um, professional users, and kind of that's the only running cost really is the ongoing monthly. Um, cost of the solution with, with a contract in place. Um, where is the solution hosted? Uh, obviously, with the on-prem, it's in your own network. Um, with our solution, it's hosted in a UK-based uh, Microsoft Azure environment with full redundancy in place. Um, so for um, data sovereignty purposes, uh, we can guarantee that all data resides within the UK, um, which is really good, um, especially with um, obviously legal, NHS, other um, uh, other uh, industries as well um, that, that we're able to, to offer that with the solution. Great. So I don't know whether anyone else has any further questions. Um, Obviously, what we would like to do is, is chat to you further, if that was okay. Um, we can, as I mentioned before, we can offer personalized demos uh, where we can go through and talk through more intricately about your process, how you'd potentially see it working. Um, we work on automation projects as well. We have a full API, um, which is a RESTful API, web API. Um, so, um, yeah, it kind of it, it enables us to, to provide integrations where maybe um, you wouldn't want to, to sort of utilize the front end. You'd maybe want to do some background work as well. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll end it there. But as I mentioned, the, the presentation is available as a handout. Please feel free to download it. Uh, the session is recorded as well. So if you wanted a copy to share with your, your colleagues and your peers, again, we'll be able to get that sorted and sent out to you in a link. But uh, thanks again for everyone's time. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you soon.